Hey all, and welcome back to Pokemon Y. And here we're in the aquarium, which we give such a shit about that we talked about other bollocks while we were here last time. I mean, at least there's a giant golden Magikarp statue there. Yeah, that golden Magikarp statue <laughs> that... Yeah, do they have like a Magikarp religion or... <sighs> Is it just an art piece? Uh, probably just an art piece, but honestly, who cares? It's a giant gold magic art. Yeah, it's like, why go out of your way? Say, like, you're a talented craftsman. Why would you go out of your way to focus your work on a weak piece of shit? Because like, it's magic art. It's glorious. <laughs> exactly. If you it's say good to, so. good to know someone else here has taste. <laughs> I'm sure everyone agrees with you. But yeah, it'd be like, you know, say we find out our like famous artists, famous sculptors or someone spent years working on like this piece that's just like a garden worm or something. <laughs> you know like it's high art, but no one gives a shit. Uh, yeah, but every Pokemon seems to hold hold some sort of importance in this world, so Yeah, it's like Wait until it becomes a Gyarados, then it's impressive. And people actually want to see it at the fucking like, aquarium. Well, I actually thinking about it, would you have a thing the size of it, like to fit a Gyarados? Because that aquarium seemed quite small. Hmm. Unless you just have an open pool with a Gyarados <laughs> jumping out of it, that won't scare anyone at all. <laughs> Look, mummy, a Gyarados! <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where'd he go? <laughs> no, we don't need that, because then that will lead to a Gyarados Harambe incident. <laughs> uh, I was thinking more along the lines of Jurassic Park, you twat. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I haven't watched that, whereas I did. I, I well, do you... still feel bad about Harambe. I, shut up, you <laughs> scum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something tells me you're not quite as traumatised about Harambe as I am. Like, oh it. look, you've destroyed a Psyduck. Let's focus on that. <laughs> a Rampe never got to I destroy a Psyduck. <laughs> Have you noticed that in some of the areas there are trees in the background? Yes, I can't remember what they do, but I think they... Do they drop berries or yes, something? Yes, dependent on moves that you use. Because oh, right. it will affect the environment. And so if you were to like use Earthquake, then it would knock uh, berries uh, out. Along those lines, yeah. I don't know what moves in particular. Things like Surf and Earthquake probably would work, though. All right, and if you were to use Cut, then the tree would fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> then it turns out, I would love it if at one point it was just a pseudo-Udo standing <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Yeah, like maybe if this was like in Gen 7 and then like the Pokemon called for help and then it just run forward to the Sudo <laughs> Widow. <laughs> okay, I'm here, mate. And then an Alpha one comes in to fill in in the background. It's <laughs> like, don't worry, <laughs> keep the scene going. But they're saying that, which if you haven't played Ultra Sun and Man, then you probably won't have noticed. So they've redesigned the Grass Trial. So, like, you know, the one where you've got to find all the ingredients and that. Right. And there is a part where. There, there are trees that are made to look like pseudo widow. Think about that for a minute. Right. Because the idea is that some of them are trees and some of them are actual pseudo widow that you gotta take items from, and if you pick the pseudo widow, then you gotta battle the pseudo widow. But, like, the fact that someone's gone out of their way to grow trees to look like the Pokemon that goes out of its way to look like a tree, it's kind of recursive at that point, do you think? That is weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's a few things like that. Basically, some of the trials got redesigned. Like, the one with the Marowax, I've played that as well. That, that they've kind of changed around what the thing is. Like, the hike is still there. But, like, you know, they've just adjusted the dances a little bit from what I recall. Uh, I haven't played that far in, although I do know that the Sophocles trial got changed a fair bit as well. Although I can't actually remember what the new one is. I think it might... Actually, yeah, it's got like some sort of puzzle thing going on. Because originally it was that one where the lights were out, wasn't it? Yes. And that was a bit shit. Mm. Although, I will say I do still prefer the old gym battle system. Fair enough. I, I agree. I don't hate the uh, way things were handled in Sun and Moon, but I do prefer gyms. Yeah, it, it feels like more of a landmark, really, doesn't it? Like a landmark on your progress through the game. Like, you know, you you kind of 
I guess almost bookmarks through the story really, like that you've beat six gyms, you've beat seven gyms or whatever, whereas the trials, given they're sort of sporadically placed, I guess you could kind of have like the islands, but it doesn't really feel the same, you know? Because there's only, there's only like, four in there as well, four trials. And well, there's yeah. several trials per island, yeah. but then there's the island captains, which are kind of their own thing. Was well, it like trial captains? No, fucking uh, I'm confused. The Island Kahunas. Oh yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Like they're the kind of proper boss battles, aren't they? Yeah, there's like four of them, is it? Yeah, yeah there's f one per island, and I think overall there's eight trials, similar to. <laughs> <Egypt. laughs> I can't remember this fucking game that I, I think... played not that long ago. Uh, <laughs> but it's like with the gym battles, you at least get the gym badge. Yeah. Afterwards, so it's like here's a symbol they gave us. Well, like you do get the Z moves, don't you? Yeah, but it doesn't feel as like memorable in a way. It's like yes, the Z move does more than the gym badge, but it was just like just the feeling of having like you've got this little badge thing. <laughs> just like yeah, I did it. <laughs> we like simple things and we hate change. That's basically <laughs> what you need to take away from this. Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, can I just say how fucking envious I am of our character right now, standing in the pouring rain when we're in a fucking heat wave and I am have been dying every day? God fucking damn it! Like, yeah. Although, oh look, advanced tips. I see you can use rock smash. Use rock smash. <laughs> that is fucking oh, incredible. That I is... love that. I completely forgot about that. Bit. That's amazing. <laughs> I've got to say, the aesthetic of rain on the beach does seem quite unpleasant, though, all things mm. considered, like, wet sand, like, nah, that just seems a bit off-putting. Anyway, back to raiding people's houses, which only seem to have one floor to them. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't know, the concept of walking into someone's house without asking has many floors. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I kind of like that house design though, the fact that like there's that one raised part with a bed on it. Mm. Like, I'm thinking of someone who will almost definitely live their entire life and then die alone. I think that's the kind of house that I could live in. <laughs> wow! <laughs> At least have some hope for your future. I might get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Right, so that's about 15 years of your life where you're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> This is one thing that I can say for the Pokemon world though, on the whole, that pretty much everywhere seems like a nice place to live and it seems like there is some quite nice building designs. Outside of the places that are specifically designed to be a shitter obviously, like you, all the buildings in the, uh, I think it's Aura region from Colosseum XD, like they're designed to be in a constant state of disrepair, which fits the crime-ridden nature of that region. But if you think of like the main ones, Kanto, everything's pretty basic. But then you look to the peaceful town of like Little Root in Hoenn. That seems like quite a nice place to live. And even like the house we moved into at the start of this game. I suppose, given there are just the two of you living there, like your character and the mother, like that seems quite a spacious property to live in. And all the other houses and that, they are more compact, like I say, and that's my aesthetic for living areas, but it doesn't really seem like there's any unpleasant places to live. I think if property value in the Kalos region is probably quite high, especially if you're closer to Lumios where everything is, but you know, I think there is a market value for the more far out, peaceful little towns as well. They're talking more about the Holocaster, which is the phone thing that Lysander gave us, or we talked to him on. And yeah, these hotels, these hotels are basically everywhere. Uh, in a lot of the major cities and that, you know, you go to the hotel and you pick things up. And there we got our shout out to Sino, which, Stephen, are you happy? Yes. <laughs> Your shitty game got acknowledged. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. If you, Your if... opinion is terrible. Explain to me why my opinion is terrible. Because Sinnoh is good. 
You're wrong. <laughs> uh, hmm. like, I don't think I've explicitly asked you this in a while. Do you have a favourite generation overall like, in terms of the main games? Honestly? No. I can kind of get that. Chris, are you, mate? I haven't played enough of them, to be honest. So, uh, I like yeah. free. For me, that's just because I'm biased as the first one I go into. But yeah, I mean I haven't paid enough for it. I will say, and this is a bit of a hot take, but like I'm tied between two really that I sort of go backwards and forwards with. It's Gen 2 and this. I've I really enjoyed my time playing through Pokemon Y again and to the point where like when I first played X, I had a really great time with it. And going back to it, I kind of had that same feeling again. There's so much about this game that I just really like. And so I know it's kind of a very unpopular opinion that this is the best generation, but to me, it's definitely up there. Uh, I know a lot of people will say five is their favorite, and mm. I kind of get that to a degree, but to me, it didn't really click, you know? So it mostly leans towards uh, black and white too. Mm. from that perspective. I mean, a lot of people do like Black and White for the fact that it is just the Gen 5 Pokemon, which I know you don't like entirely, but I do. I like the way they went with it. And, well, plus the story was interesting. It is the story that's the biggest yeah. seller Gen 5, isn't it? Mm. Which I kind of see why people might not click going back to this very basic thing, but to me, like, I just, I'm not fussed. So mm. I... It's one of them, like, you know, stupid opinions that you can't really justify, but it's up there for me. But also one of the biggest issues for Gen 5, in my opinion, is the region itself. And that mm. it's more specifically the route you take. It is just a straight line, in essence. I guess so. I think that might have been from trying to filter down, like, making HMs non-mandatory. And like they kind of hadn't really got a workaround yet until like say Gen Seven when they start bringing in the wild Pokemon. Yeah, but it just felt lackluster. And the same goes for X and Y, in my opinion as well. Because again, this also feels like a straight line until you reach uh... Forget the name of the city now with the tower. Lumios. Lumios, that's it. Lumios is a weird one because like you kind of see different parts of it in different times and there's also a lot of bullshit you can do and there's also ways that you can end up going back to it through other routes, which mm. is kinda of weird, although like, you know, there's higher level encounters there, so it doesn't really matter. So like also with uh, black and white, it's like half of the region is also cut off from you until you finish the main story. Yeah, which like I suppose that's kind of not really that different to say like having Kanto shut off in Gen Two until you beat it. But I, I suppose it's because like Unova well, is bigger than Johto. Yeah, isn't but it? the way that Gen Two goes about is that yeah, you've beaten all of the gyms in Johto. But now you can carry on to Kanto to beat those gyms and then beat the league. Uh, well, no, because you beat the league to start with, don't you? Oh, well, yeah. I haven't finished it yet, so... Yeah, well, you got the league next. There's, like, a super boss after. Of course. You know, you've done the Kanto gyms, but, yeah. I would say, like, these fucking ramps, like, this city or this town, like... That must be more work to navigate for a typical mm. person just going day to day. Like, I, it is very much a cycling city and I know that's the focus here. But, you know, if you're just walking around, do you want to go up to see the sides? It's, uh, it's a slog. They've just got one hill. The Silog Hill. <laughs> that's it. And it's just built for bikes. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I will say to in this town's defence, the Silage City theme is really fucking cool. Like, it's kind of very upbeat and peppy and I kind of like that for a city theme. It maybe doesn't match the fact that it's pouring rain outside, mm. <laughs> you know, that kind of doesn't really work too well. But yeah, 
I have got my Pokemon a massage. That's cool. Would you like to massage this Onyx next? <laughs> Would you uh, like to massage this Charizard's tail? How does that work? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like, especially like in Gen 2 when you can get them haircuts. <laughs> Doesn't my Magnemite look stylish now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Would like... you like to trade a love disc for my Steelix? Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Good deal! <laughs> Great deal! Uh, like, I'm glad that, you know, he's ripping himself off here, because, like, who the fuck gives a shit about I, Love Disc? I don't think I ever traded with that person. I completely overlooked them. <laughs> mm. Well, let's say, Chris, favourite between those two? <laughs> oh, it's got to be uh, Love Disc there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. shoot, obviously. Yeah. We, well, come on, it can learn bounce. <laughs> Well, like, this is Thumper. <laughs> why do I feel like it should be uh, a rabbit? <laughs> uh, why do I feel like they should have called it Fluffy? <laughs> I seem to recall in my black and white, my, my Pokemon Black playthrough the first time, like, I might have called the Kabalion. Is it the yes, legendary one? Yes, I remember you constantly saying you called your Kabalion Fluffy. Yeah, it's a cute name for it. <laughs> cute little Fluffy like, Kabalion. Despite, despite the fact that it's the leader of the swordsman. <laughs> yeah, Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we're, co we're coming towards the tail end of a recording session. This is what it does to us, folks. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we're just going to get ourselves healed up without an interesting camera angle this time. And that will do us for this part of Pokemon Y. It's like the equivalent of calling Giratina Mr. Snuggles. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs>